Welcome to WBO Wrestling Championships. We are in Elida and we are ready for the finals. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Brady Overholt. And it's been a full day of wrestling here, Brady, and it's been active and we're ready for the final parts of the day. Yeah, this is where it kind of gets fun, you know. We're going for these championship matches with some of these guys that have experience in, in these championship matches, some of them don't. So exciting for all the teams and it's neat to see the whole WBL out in one, one arena. Starting with weight class 106, we've got Caleb Krogman from Salina. He is in the green, wrestling Hulkwin Estrada from Van Wert, who is in the red, 106 weight class. Both of these guys pinned their previous opponents to make their way into this final here. Yeah, and this was, we were talking before the broadcast, this was the by far the smallest weight class of all of them. There was only four guys total. <laughs> uh, most weight classes have about nine, so uh, the first and second seed, you know, won their way through those first matches and are now meeting up in this final here. And Early on, looks like a takedown. I was just about to say we were scoreless, but we're not scoreless anymore. 1.4, was that for Van Wert? Yeah, yeah, takedown for Van Wert, so they got two, and then it looks like a Salinas, points, yep, Salinas about to get an escape, so now we're back to two to one, and uh, they're kind of going, going going after each other. That was a quick two given by the ref, so, but uh, Salina did a good job of then getting the escape, so now we're back on our feet with a two to one lead for Van Wert. We are still in the first period here. Van Wert is red. Salina is green, which actually works out pretty well with their school colors as well. Yeah, if it worked like that all day for us, it'd it make it a lot easier, That's wouldn't it? That's right. Can we do blue right, and bath right. quiz wrestling? Right. Yeah. So about halfway done with this first period here and kind of going back and forth, just feeling each other out a little bit. And the good thing about these finals matches is they're a little, you know, a little tighter, hopefully, and a little more competition. Some of the early matches, you see quick pins and stuff like that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, another, Two points for Van Wert there, so now we're at four to one. Yeah, another good takedown and quick snap down from uh, Van Wert. And now, if I'm Van Wert, I'm just trying to ride out and finish this period. Uh, going into period two, up four to one is the plan if I'm, if I'm Strata right now. Of course, those of you at home know this, but if by chance some of your non-wrestling friends are watching, there are three periods in wrestling. If you end at a tie, then we will go to a uh, overtime break there. Was that because he lost his, his uh, mouthpiece? Uh, no, uh, finish, end of the first period. So right now I think we're at uh, Van Wert four. Uh, looks like Van Wert de de uh, declined, so Salinas choosing neutral as we go into period two here. we come into this, uh, St. Mary's is your leader right now. They also came into this tournament undefeated and were the defending champions from last year. Yeah, I was looking up some and it's really impressive because you think of the powerhouses over the last 20, 30 years, it's been Defiance and Walpock, but I'll tell you what, the uh, the past three years, St. Mary's is three time defending league champions, <laughs> going for a fourth in a row. And, and as we get another two from uh, Van Wert here as we're talking, but. Uh, they, they really have put themselves above everyone else these past few years and are trying to continue for a fourth year in a row here. We are in the second period. This is the 106 weight class. It's Caleb Krogman from Salina against Hulkwin Estrada of Van Wert. Estrada is winning yeah. at the moment, mm -hmm. and we got a count. And now he's, and again, for some of you new, once we get to a, a, a four counter below is two points. If he gets to the five, then it becomes a three point, which you see ref just mm -hmm. gave him three. So um, puts him up nine to one right now. So. And I think that was three more points that we another, saw right there as well. Another three set of backs, so in a lot of action here, this first uh, match. For again, some of you at home, there's there's really four different ways you can win. You can have a decision, which is a three-point win, which is eight points or seven points or less. And he got the pin, there we go. <laughs> and, and the most going all the way to a six-point win is a pin, which we just see from Estrada. Hukwun Estrada, Van Wert with a pin. He is your 106 pound weight class winner. You're watching the WBL Wrestling Championships presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone. Proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics and we will be back with the 113 weight class right after this. 
Welcome back to the WBO Wrestling Championships presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. This is the 113 weight class. We've got last year's defending champion, I believe in 106, that's Tate Heisey from St. Mary's Memorial. You see him wrestling right now against Caden Mel Melo, Melo, Melot, yeah. Melot uh, Wapakoneta. Yeah, so these are some familiar names. Walpalky and St. Mary's both have some Heisey brothers that have just graduated <laughs> that battled in, in previous years, and now we have their younger brothers uh, out here in the championship match as well. So kind of kind of neat, but uh, about the same last names with different kids out here today. Take Heisey, Heisey and Poland there on the leg, uh, but uh, Malat is not budging here. Yeah, he defending it pretty well here right on the edge. Uh, again, both experienced wrestlers and... Uh, both come in with some real solid uh, records. Looking at Heisey, he actually is yet to lose this year. I think he comes in at about 33 and 0. 33 so. and 0. Fifth place at state last year as a freshman. Impressive, in my opinion. Very <laughs> impressive. Yeah, I think one of the highest highest uh, placement for the league, if not the highest, if I if I remember right from last year. So I'm sure St. Mary's has a, you know expecting a lot from this young kid, even though he's only a sophomore over the next couple years. Well, considering his uh, his family line, he's got a dad who's a coach, he's got brothers who also wrestle. There probably was just um, inevitable. <laughs> right. He's going to come he, in he, here with he, this. he may have not had a choice, but <laughs> but he's definitely rose to the occasion All and right. he's doing well. Two legs are out, so they are going to head back to the middle. We are still in the first period. Is that correct? Yeah, about about three fourths of the way through the first period here with no score yet. So uh, it's Malaz trying to get an early takedown here and. Again, we, we have some good wrestling here in the final matches here and some scrambling and some of these matches are neat. You start to see the closer ones that finish one, two points apart instead of the quick mm -hmm. pins that we talked about earlier. So, And we are in the finals here, so we're certainly hoping to see a bit of that. Now, what was that call that just happened? So that was a scissors of the leg. If you saw, uh, the legs were as crossed around the head, with, which they can't do, so a point was given. A point was given, uh, and given that to, the, to yeah to the uh, it looks it, uh, I believe that went to Malat. So for those of you at home that wonder why we might be uh, hesitating, where we're seated, we actually aren't able to see the scoreboard, but we are working on making sure we can. But we can see the wrestlers, right, right. which is the key. Yeah, a little little different setup than normal in the the gym here at Elida. We're usually at the field house for big tournaments, but are at the high school instead. So. So this particular weight class started with eight wrestlers earlier today. We talked about the one earlier at 106, only had four, eight wrestlers for Tate Heisey and Caden Malat to make it their way to the first and second place. Tate Heisey with pins over Kale Dodson of Shawnee and Sam Burkholder of Bath. Caden Malat, he won also with pins over Keith Noble of Elida and Matthew Deno of Van Wert. Yeah, so far the match has stayed pretty close, and, and again, they're, with the experience we mentioned, they're just really not 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 doing anything too risky to to allow the other one to get any type of you know five point move and and, and try to battle through all three periods. As do you think that's part of strategy, or is that just the way? Because both of these guys are very strong, I, uh, smart wrestlers. Yeah, I think a little of both, to be honest. I think I think they both know know one another. I've seen each other before, kind of know what to expect, and are. Just trying to get in a position to not do anything. Trying for an escape. Didn't quite get, oh great, two points there for Heisey. So takedown was given to Heisey there. So it should be, should be two to one as I see Coach Rossifer coming over. I wonder if, I thought, I've known him for a long time, and I wonder if he's gonna argue to see if that was actually control on that takedown. Usually the knees have to be down and, and full uh, full control. So he was just kind of asking the ref there, and, and, and the ref didn't budge. So yeah, the takedown's given, so it's it's two to, two to one right now. Now, do the refs ever reverse their calls and change those points? Yeah, every once in a while. We see, we got Coach walking back over here again, just checking things out. Yeah, so, and, and this is, which we don't see throughout the entire day, but in the championship match, there's always two refs. So the ref can go to the secondary official. Uh, there's always a head official in each, ma in the championship matches in the secondary. And 
if the secondary officials see something different, they can talk kind of like mm -hmm. refs in a football match okay. and, and, and overturn a, a call possibly. And Coach Rossifer's been around for a long time at Walpock, so uh, he carries some weight sometimes on his question. He, he knows what he's talking about. So that's putting us in just a slight stalling here, or just a little break as they, uh, they analyze this. They take a look at the, uh, the points. We need to have the ref mic'd right now. So, yeah, so it looks like they're still. One to one is what we're being told at the moment. So they're still trying to figure things out. You see uh, Paul Basinger over here, longtime official. He's a secondary in this match. So yeah, that was actually, it was overturned. So that, that high Z takedown was overturned. So we actually have 2-0 with. Uh, and they awarded a point to Malat as well. Right, for an escape. So a little confusion there, I think, on the ref side, but we got it taken care of. And they are back in action, 2-0 right now. Heisey, a defending champion from last year in a different weight class, wrestling against Caden Malat of Wapakoneta. And as you see already, it's probably not a good word, I'm going to call it a doozy of a match. Yeah, but th yeah <laughs> no, th it is. And this is one where, as far as I, ha I ha kind of had this one circled. This is uh, uh, one I think oh. the, the fans understand. Two points right there. So now we got two to yeah, two. two to two. So. So he got his points back, and, and you'll now see uh, a locking hands called. So a lot of action here real quick, which is now going to be a point against Tyze to go back up for uh, Malahat two to three to two. So a point against Tyze. So he did something that actually cost right. him a point. Right, so that was called locking hands. When you're in control. And this is still the first period. It's a lot of action. <laughs> yeah, a lot of action to where and this is one of the uh, more anticipated matches of the, the evening, and, and it hasn't disappointed. So just for all you fans at home, it's right now we have three to two with a wall puck up. As we're nearing the end of the exciting first period. That's right, you mentioned that St. Mary's defending champion comes in undefeated and is in the lead. But Walpock second place as we go into the finals here. So all these points matter. Right. And uh, Heisey's just the first of several St. Mary's uh, wrestlers we're going to see here in the finals. We also got several Walpock, though. It's going to be a good good rest of the day. Yeah, yeah. They've kind of, they've kind of, uh, both teams here with a little, with Salina in a distant, th or near third. But, you know, St. Mary's kind of got ahead of the pack and Walpock's right there, though. So this is definitely would be a huge win for Walpock to kind of change things a little bit on the finals here. Second quarter action at the moment. Walpock is leading right now, three to two. Walpock is red in the red singlet, but also the red color on the leg. And St. Mary's Memorial is in the blue singlet, and he is green. So, and so from the neutral position, no points are going to be awarded until we have some type of takedown. So we're still we're still considered neutral until we see control from one of the the wrestlers here. Heisey trying to suck that leg in to get a takedown, but Malat's doing a real good job at countering this so far today. And just see, I just see the strength in their legs, man. The muscles are tensed up as they are going after with each other. Yeah, he's still working to get in there, and again, you see it. You just got to get himself just over get, there. Get if he's that gonna leg get and that. climb in the body a little oh, bit. There he is. <laughs> there goes it too. So. Now we now we have uh, Heisey in the lead, four to three. So again, back kind of back and forth here, and this third period is going to become crucial in, uh, in what happens and what what uh, spot the wrestler chooses, either top, bottom, or neutral. So definitely a spot though where Malat cannot give up any near fall. So again, right now the ref stopped that. That's a potentially dangerous call. So. Just to protect the wrestlers here, they reset in the same positions they were. Should be getting close to the 30-second yeah. mark here yep. in the second period. 
So college, there's what's called writing time, and, and there can be extra points awarded. Uh, high school doesn't have that, so. <laughs> it's kind of like the basketball shot clock. Right, 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 <laughs> yeah. So short time coming up in period two with Heisey in the lead here by one point. And that ends it right there. The second quarter is finished, and just as Brady mentioned, Heisey of St. Mary's Memorial leads by one over Caden Mallant of Wapakoneta, four to three. You're watching a great match here at the WBL Wrestling Championship, sponsored by Wabash Mutual Telephone. Yeah, these are the type you want to see, and Mallant's not backing down. He's come going after Heisey here, so. Well, you mentioned the two wrestlers know each other, so they knew what they were coming in for. They knew what style they were looking at. This isn't the first time they've seen each other right. at all, or right. wrestled each other. Right, right, yeah. The, you know, we, they're kind of the, some of the couple of the top guys here in the WBL, even though they're, they're both uh, still young. They, they are what I would consider two, two of the top five to ten wrestlers in the entire league. Mm -hmm. So. So again, as matches go, this is one that I think a lot of you can hear by the crowd a lot, a lot of right. a lot we're anticipating and excited for. I love watching the crowd because they're right. very intent. They're just staring. They're kind of leaning forward. Everyone's leaning forward and watching. I don't see any moms screaming in lately. <laughs> that happens at some times. I'm a sports mom. Right. I get that. Um, just locked arms right there. They are just locked in. Well, and we're coming upon. Not not much time here, so so this is where uh, Walpock has to do something. You know, Heisey is content with being up by one, so the pressure has to come from Walpock. So we have Heisey up by one, and he is choosing down for the, our last period. Uh, this is where it's going to be tricky. I'm guessing if I'm Walpock and knowing Coach Rossford, he's going to probably try for a 30 seconds to a minute to work a turn to get some back points, and if he can't, he'll go on his feet. He's going to try to turn him right there right. if he can and get those back right. points. And, the, oh, and that oh, may he's going to try for the escape. May have backfired because oh. if Walpo, or, uh, if Heisey can gain control, that's going to be two points for him. Ankle. And there, and there he goes. And, and, six, six three. And, and Heisey does very good. He's very good at riding on top. So that finishes. Oh. But we're in overtime. That's what we're doing. We're missing. Yeah, that scoreboard certain us. So. Ah, so we we did not have the updated scoring information. Yeah, so a little confusion here on 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 the in, in the spot. Seven four is our score at the moment. Seven four in favor of Heisey. So, and, and this is going to get a lot in trouble again. Heisey's real good at defending here, and he's he's working to get another two, which will win him the match. And that should end it here. And you can hear the cheers in the crowd. Two more points for Heisey. They're pulling off their colored straps, shaking hands, and there's your WBL champion, Tate Heisey. At 113, the sophomore is now a two-time WBL champion. We'll be back right after this. We're back, everyone, and this is 120. It's the 120 weight class, and who do we have going on right now? It's Mike rights of St. Mary's Memorial against Xavier Leal of Van Wert. We just watched another St. Mary's Memorial Van Wert match at 113, and we have them again. These two came into these finals, first and second place. These guys are scrappling. They're moving around quickly. Yeah, so Kreitz from uh, Memorial's uh, a common name here. He's a senior uh, and, and has been wrestling right with all the Heisey brothers, you know, so he's really, he's really done well for himself as well. As uh, as Xavier Leal from Van Wert, uh, kind of a newer name here. Van Wert, I think I think this is their only guy they have in the finals. As he got a quick takedown and is up by two right now. 
with about, oh, about a minute, a little over a minute left in period one. Xavier Leal's trip to the finals first got him. He had a bye, and then after that, he uh, had a pin in 15 seconds over Donovan Campbell of Shawnee. Michael Kreitz made his way here with a pin in a minute over Harrison Bryan of Kenton, and then a pin in 110 against Dalton Hootner of Wapakoneta. So we see the the Van Wert has has legs in here and just trying to ride out. And, and again, uh, for, guys, for some of us that haven't watched much wrestling, you, you have to keep working from the top position or you get called for what's a stalling call. And then multiple stalling calls, you, you, you lose points. So. So Van Wert's doing a good job on top of actually working, so he's not just stalling and kind of, kind of wasting time, and, and has really controlled uh, Kreitz so far, uh, without Kreitz really doing much to be able to base up to get out of that. So you see a call from the ref. That's a stalemate. So again, when nothing happens for a extended amount of time, stalemates are called. They go back to the same position just to try to get a little mm -hmm. more action. I noticed Kreitz was really working to keep his legs up strongly out, which would keep uh, keep Leal from being able to really put him down. Right, right, yeah, he, he did do a good job. Kind of, you know, uh, obviously, Leal's trying to work turns, and, and, and those weren't there, so period one uh, ends with uh, Leal keeping that original takedown and uh, up 2-0 going into period two. So period two, St. Mary's deferred, which just means he, he's going to now get a call period three instead. So Van Wert called neutral. What's the advantage of choosing to defer at that uh, point? It, they, get, they then get pick in the third period. So maybe if, uh, you know, depending on the how close a match is, then they can choose uh, what, what position they want their wrestler in. Period two. Leal still leads 2-0 over Kreitz. This is the 120-pound weight class. I want to remind you that there's no admission fee for you to watch this match and this tournament, but there is a cost for WOSN and TV44 to broadcast it for you. Say thanks to viewer supported TV44 and WOSN by sending us a financial gift. We rely on your donations from viewers to enable the airing of this tournament and other locally produced programs. Donate now by visiting WTLW.com forward slash donate. It's getting a little bit loud now. Yeah, you hear a lot of noise. Kreitz is really trying to get a takedown here, and, and Neil's doing, Xavier's doing a good job of, of defending it, although. As I say that, Kreitz gets, gets his two and is actually now going for even some uh, possible back points. So. <laughs> and I don't mean to laugh. There's certainly nothing uh, funny about it, but it's just how quickly <laughs> right. things can turn. And we're seeing that right now again as he's working on getting that cradle. In there. Right, right. So, he, yeah, he's he's got his two takedown, and now he's got that locked up. And, and we call that kind of like a bow and arrow cradle there that he's trying to get some back points. Xavier hasn't given any up yet, so we're still tied at two. And this, oh, though, is not him a good... Over there. This is not a good spot for Xavier to be in. Got himself back, rolled over. You got to keep that one shoulder up. So right now they're and oh. there's a pain. And that's it. Michael Kreitz gets the victory with a pin over Xavier Leal of Van Wert. He is your WBL champion in the 120-pound weight class. You're watching the WBL Wrestling Championship on WOSN. Welcome back to Elida High School for the finals of WBL Wrestling Championship. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Brady Overholt, and this is the 126 pound weight class. You're watching Defiance's Victor, Victor Jerkovich. Did I say that correctly? I, yep. Jerkovich, he's got the green strap on, and he is against, well, I guess the hometown boy right here in Elida, because this is his place, Kirk. Skyler. Yeah, I see that, and as we say, it's hometown. It looks like our guys messed his name up because it's actually Skyler Kirk, so they got that. Uh, <laughs> so luckily, I knew his first name I'm was Skyler. I'm glad that you so. could correct that. That's right. Our, our, our yeah. information here says Kirk yeah, Skyler. Yeah. So, uh, Sorry there, Mr. Kirk. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, this is uh, talking to uh, Defiance's coach earlier on. Uh, Jerkovich actually was wrestling a couple weight classes above and has made the drop. Uh, by about 10 or so pounds. Wow, 10 pounds, that's a lot. 
in a season. Yeah, right. So, uh, and, and it's uh, it's obviously right now paying off because he got the early takedown on uh, Kirk, who's had a real good season himself. So, so this could this is definitely a, a uh, someone uh, Skyler hasn't seen because he was wrestling uh, up at 138. Um, so that he could be he could have his hands full as he's as a. Uh, He's wrestling this defiance kid from a couple weight classes above <laughs> from earlier in the year. So if he really dropped that much weight, I'm just trying to think how many uh, how many jumps he did on um, the the jump um, jump rope. Yes, um, yes. How many times he was running up and down? I'm, yeah. <laughs> all the all the little things that these wrestlers do to get them into that weight class. Yeah, and luckily, again, it's a lot more regulated than it used to be. They, they now have to do beginning of the year. Uh, body fat checks, so they're only allowed to drop so much. Um, I mean, it's even been an issue nationally years ago. You hear wrestlers cutting weight and, you know, having health issues. So yeah, they've really yes. done a good job at uh, trying to combat that by, by by doing these checks where they're only allowed to drop so much weight and their body fat can only go down by so much. So, so wherever he was, he is at a point where he's still at a certain <laughs> body fat level and, and is allowed to be down, so. Our score right now is two to one, defiance over Elida. Uh, Kirk did get one point for an escape just a little while ago, and uh, oh, and he's really going after that. Yes. Now. So, two, two, no back points were given, but he did come after him to get the takedown. So Kirk goes up into the second period, up three to two. Some good aggressiveness there at the end, and good for Defiance, good thing period was ending because it looked like he would have got some back point as well. And this this is a much more packed weight class than we've seen so far, and these guys have wrestled quite a bit more than all the previous wrestlers up to this finals point. Right, some of these guys, you know, one of, oh, we're out of bounds right. there, but some of these guys have only wrestled uh, one match, like the 106 pounders. Some have wrestled two. Uh, these guys both had to uh, win win three matches to get here, I believe. At, at least two. At That's least two right. matches. Victor, so. uh, Victor has he okay, he did get a bye, so he's won two matches, a pin and a decision. Kirk Schuyler the same way. He's uh, a technical fall and a uh, major decision. So Schuyler looks like he has that locked up and, and trying to get some more back points here if he possibly can. And, and there there is one thing, you know, Cutting some weight does, I, I'll tell you from just experience from years, you know, it does it does wear on you some too, you know. Yeah, you're at a lower weight, but the energy loss sometimes mm -hmm. when, when making that drop down from, you know, not as much body fat and maybe a little muscle mass has lost too, so. That's true, that's that's a point to, to take into consideration. Um, when you do lose, lose weight, you don't always want to lose the muscle and some of it does come along with it. Right. Yeah, that's so, so a lot. Anyone that's not really familiar with wrestling does, has never understood the whole process of <laughs> cutting weight in specific weight classes. So, all right, there's a one point for Jerkovic for the escape there. That makes it tied at three to three. Yep, we're at three to three right now, and about halfway through period two. So, and that was Defiance's choice in period two. To, and that, this is a type of match where it's close, where the, the, the choice in period three is so important. The idea is if, if, uh, you know, you have, if you're tied in period, going into period three and you choose down, you can get an escape to give yourself one point and you, you get up one. So that's kind of that importance of having that, that, that choice in the third period. Oh. Looks like a no. No, he lost that leg there. I think if he would have kept that leg trap, Kirk would have got him. Good reaction by Kirk to get another takedown. So that puts us at 5-3. Kirk from Elida is currently in the lead as we are still in the second period, but getting close to the end. And this is where you don't want to let him go. If he can, if he can hold him off, and it looks like he just did, so. We'll go into third period with Kirk up five to three in his choice, and looks like he chose down. So, again, from the coaching standpoint, just, you know, I'm telling my wrestler, stay smart. You're up by two. Don't do anything silly to give some back points and, and finish this two minutes out strong as you can. So then what does Jerkovic have to do since he's down two points? Um, he's going to need to combat all of that uh, 
that Elite is going to be trying to establish. Right, right. So right now, if you're Jerkovic, you're simply trying to get some back points, which means you got to get a turn, you got to get some near fall counted uh, to get two or three points. So um, he's got to get that leg, or he's got to get something to pull him over. Right, right. And, and the situation he's in right now, you know, it, it's hard on experienced wrestlers. And, and Skylar Kirk only is senior or junior at Elida. He's he's kind of their their, their leader. He, he's the experienced wrestler that Elida has, and and it's going to be hard to turn him. So eventually Defiance has to almost make a decision. Do we try to go back to our feet, maybe work some throws or takedowns, or do we continue to try to turn him the whole time and run out of time? So, so if he does that, then that's going to, he's going to get an escape point, right, which right. is going to move so him up. So you got to think through all those right, things. Right. So there's a lot to it. You know, it's always up by one is an easy one if, if he's down by one. But since he's down by two, that makes it harder to de on that decision. Stalemate was called, so they'll go back to resetting there. Fine coaches are trying to give some uh, suggestions there. I love watching wrestling coaches. Now, right now, everybody's pretty calm, but man, sometimes there is so much energy oh, that yeah. comes out of these coaches. A lot of times and it's, it's the coaches, and a lot of times it's the mom. When, hey, the I, wrestled, mom, when I wrestled, it. it was the, the mom, and when my brothers wrestled, it was the mom we could hear. What are you saying hear. about so we sports it moms? The, it was Come the mom now. we could hear, so. Uh, yeah. So Kirk did get that escape. Yeah, and as we were talking, Coach, Six, Mur three. Coach Murphy, who's experienced, said, hey, if we can't turn him, we got to go to takedown. So that's what that's what he did, and now he's down three. So the problem is, though, a takedown only, it still keeps him down one, so. so we're out of bounds there. And it, it seems like it turned. Jerkovic really came out at the beginning of the match and really came at him. And the last couple minutes, though, it's really been Kirk kind of in control, uh, even though it's only a, a three-point match. He's really set the pace this last couple couple periods. Well, I often wonder about the um, endurance that's needed when you get into that third period. After you've locked arms for so long, it's easy for, for like me as a viewer to not start and think about how much muscle they're using that whole time. Oh, they're nothing, he nope, for, no nope. points. He, he but. went for a throw and didn't get it, so Kirk will wind up winning. and get his first WBL championship for Elida. First WBL championship for Elida, the junior, Skylar Kirk. He is your 160 pound weight class champion at the WBL Wrestling Championship. You're watching this great tournament presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. We'll be back with the 132 pound weight class right here on WOSN. We're moving now to the 132 pound weight class. Mason Ducat of Defiance against Gavin Reidenauer of Wapakoneta. 132 pound weight class, Defiance versus Wapakoneta. Yeah, and Ducat's only a uh, sophomore, but he, he's really experienced. He got to the state tournament last year. Uh, I'm excited to see this kid over the next few years. Uh, WBL champion as a freshman last year, so. He, just like Heisey that we saw earlier, is already going for their second championship in, in only two years, so. And that's impressive. You know, you can get a, a solid athlete who comes into high school, and I'm sure a lot of these guys have been wrestling for years and years, but there's something that happens when they get into high school. They've got to make that change. Even though they've been to big tournaments, I sometimes see freshmen struggle. So right. it's great to hear about these two guys who walked in here and just had the solid strength to make their way to state state the state meet out right. of bounds. And, and it's kind of like anything, you know, it's 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 sports, it's high school, it's going to, you know, that first year of college, that freshman year, whatever, <laughs> it's, it's always kind of the toughest. So so you, you really see, you know, uh, these guys flourish at, as that sophomore year, even though it's only one year difference, just a lot more experience. And, you can a lot of times see the change in their body right. physique as well, especially when you get the seniors, the, the rock solid muscle, a lot right. of times that builds up. There's a lot of big difference between a ninth grader and a 12th grader. Right, right, right. Which these guys aren't at yet. <laughs> so that is, again, we said earlier, that's what we call potentially dangerous. So the ref stops them there. No point still, we're still 0-0 zero, zero, and we're still neutral. Is that a warning? Or is that just a call? Just a call, just potentially dangerous. Now, if there's anything that would be maybe considered an illegal move, then we would get like some a possible technical point or something. But but that's just more protecting the wrestlers on anything that could, again, just as it's called, potentially dangerous call um, to reset them, to get them away from those possibilities of an arm or a, a leg that's being torqued the way it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm.
again, Reidenauer doing good himself uh, for, for Mwapalk with, 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 with keeping himself even as we near the end of period one. We can't say that there isn't action going on, but they are staying neutral, staying steady there. Uh, as that ref, you see as that ref's eyes are on their hands. Oh, oh and, and right now we're... Yeah, the Walpaw Walpaw coaches Walpaw's are saying to, to it should have been a takedown. To me, I'm not seeing total control. Uh, and as the ref waved it off, he's not giving it to. Um, I think that's probably the right call by the ref. Uh, it was right as the period ended, and, and you couldn't see full control for Walpaw. So I would agree with what not giving the two there, and they stay 0-0 zero, zero going into period two. Period two now, the 132-pound weight class defiances Mason Ducat. He's got the green strap a, against Gavin Reidenauer of Wapakoneta, who is, did he just get the one quick, point? Quick escape by Ducat, yeah. So he was down, he got a quick escape. Really, right off the whistle, he got an early escape. So defiance is now up 1-0. Uh, we're only about 25 seconds into uh, second period, and, and uh, yeah, that was a very quick sit out and a quick escape by Ducat, so. Now we're kind of back to where we were in period one. With. <laughs> you know, though, this is kind of what you want to see in the finals. Right, you right. Know? It, it, definitely, definitely. Because because some years, uh, you know, sometimes we have very top level wrestlers and, and some that maybe aren't, aren't, aren't just there yet. And in finals, you see pins. A good finals, you don't really want to see pins. You want matches like the past few, you know, that, that are by points and, and uh, kind of close up till the end. Again, nothing yet. If I'm Ducat, I'm trying to just get a stalemate and get back to our feet. Wapak, you can see their coach is trying to get right now to just lift that leg for a takedown, but good good scramble, good defense by Ducat here to not give anything up. And he did get that stalemate call, so they're back to neutral. Is there a period of time that the ref's kind of counting in his mind to get an idea when that stalemate's going to get called? I, I, I would. They would probably tell you no. To me, I've always, it's always kind of been a about that five second or so, mm. five day second where you really don't see anything, it, it, it's called, so. Grabbing for the leg. Both sides are trying to, to get control there. They're like a pretzel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and this is again one of those where, you know, we, they're both kind of going after each other. We don't really see a change. So this is where after a certain amount, the, the ref can possibly call a stalemate. Um, I would say to me, if it, they stay like this, it's going to be called, and it is. We are still in the second quarter. The score is 1-0. Mason Ducat from Defiance over Gavin Reidenauer of Wapakoneta. Reidenauer really came after him there. Uh, we're down to just about 10 seconds or so, a little less. And just like we ended period... Period one, he was going for a takedown, but didn't get it. So Ducat escapes another period, still up 1-0. So that's where the clock has really helped him, uh, helped Ducat, that is, to avoid that that takedown. Right, right. Yeah, Not the same for Wapak, though. It's, right, it's been right. against Wapak. Yeah, two, we're, we're, you're right. We're two in a row here where it's almost Wapak had it, time ends, and, and, and Ducat stays safe. So so now Ducat's up 1-0, Wapak's down, so Wapak's trying to get escape, and we go right back, and he did. And he got it. So we're right back to 1-1 with a lot of time left in period two, So here or three. So here's where they really got to go after it. And this is it. At this point, it'll either someone's going to get another point or two or three, or we're going to go to overtime. Crowd's really starting to get, get into this, which is fun. Oh, he's oh. trying to pull him back Pulling in. Pulling him back in. He's keeping both those feet in there. You're hearing the uh, third place mat right now, which I believe just finished in a pin. I think Elida just got that. Oh, we aren't showing yeah. that to you, but that's what's <laughs> happening over there. And yep, that was Elida finishing in third place. A bunch of cheering going yeah, on. Viewers are probably watching at home thinking, I'm not seeing much excitement. Why is there so much yelling? But the third place match, yeah, it looked like a tight, tight match over there that Elida pulled off there at the end. You can also go to the WBL website if you want to see the brackets and see all of these other matches that we're not able to show you here. We've only got the finals for you, but it's just a small glimpse of everything that's been happening here all day long. Right. Starting yeah. at 10 o'clock, and it's been 
It's been a busy, busy, active day. Yeah, and, and we've talked about Ducat a few times. I mean, a state qualifier and a champion last year, but I'm, I'm really impressed with Reidenhauer as well. He was third seed, uh, and he beat uh, Folk, Folk uh, I think Folkline, yeah, yeah, Folkline from Salina. So he already had one upset, beating the second seed, and now he's. this would be really impressive. Mason Ducat made his way here by two pins to make his way to the finals. Gavin. Oh, and it just as I said, big <laughs> throw by Ducat to back points, takedown and back points. And this is probably going to end things. Even if he doesn't get a pin, he's not going to let this up. And he'll, he'll ride time So he out. had the two points for the fall. And, and he had the back pin. points, yeah. but it doesn't matter now. He's got the pin. And that's how quick it can change. We talk, we go from one to one, almost maybe overtime to pin and match over. So. That's it, Mason Ducat of Defiance, 132-pound WBL champion. You are watching the WBL Wrestling Championship presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone. Proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics right here on WOSN. We are back, and it's the 138-pound weight class of WBL Wrestling Championships. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Brady Overholt. Antoine Adams of Wapakoneta right now grappling against Keaton Sudath, 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 yep. Sudath. Those of you at home, my desire <laughs> is always to get the names right. You can call me at the station if I've said it incorrectly, so I don't ever say it wrong again. It's Van Wert against Wapakoneta. Van Wert in the red signet. Wapakoneta in the. Yeah. yeah. Actually, well, I'm well, sorry. Van Wert in the gray. Well, yeah. Wapakoneta in the red. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, little it's not as easy as that first match where we had green and <laughs> green and red, so and just like we've seen in our last two matches, we're starting out uh, we're at zero zero right, right now in the first period and they're working at it, but we're not getting points yet. In a lot of these we're we're seeing the seeds are working out. When we say the seeds, if you if you are go online and look at these uh, brackets at WBLsports.com, uh, this is the first seed. Uh, versus, you know, at Walpock was the first seed, uh, and Van Wert was a second. And uh, most often, we do see those first and second seeds meet each other in finals. Every once in a while, we have some upsets, but but uh, this this is kind of playing out how it was supposed to. And we'll hope, hope for another good match. We've had some good ones here. Oh, we absolutely have. So far, Adams to make his way here. Technical fall, 26 to 11 over Quincy Tracy of St. Mary's. Then a pin in 306 over Andrew Hines of Salina. Sudath's direct uh, path here was a 11-9 decision in overtime over Justice Pope of Ottawa Glandorf, and then pin in 5-59 over Michael Waltz of Defiance, because we have Wapak versus Van Wert. Still in the, are we? First period. Still, still in the yep. first period, but yep, just about to about, the end. Yeah, about, ten, about five seconds or so left. So right now, no score, so we'll go into period two. Zero, 0 So this is again where I'm most likely coach defers uh, to get choice in the third period to kind of possibly give them an advantage. It's kind of like in uh, football where we'll see tomorrow, you know, where, mm -hmm. where the team defers to get the ball, for, you know, they defer uh, to get the ball until the beginning of the second half. So whether it helps or not, who knows, but that's mm -hmm. kind of the strategy where, where teams have, coaches have. So a quick uh, escape from Walpock to go up 1-0. He's also trying to keep that leg hooked and possibly get a two takedown as well, which he just did yeah, to right. put him up 3-0. Uh, and we're pretty early here in the second period. Walpock, and again, this is where Walpock's just trying to stay in control, work for turns, not give an escape. Uh, Van Wert is trying to get on their feet, either get an escape or a reversal. You, know, you notice in the finals, keeping a match close is so important because two or three points, three, four points uh, being given up doesn't seem like much, but for some of these better wrestlers, it's so much, and, and they don't, won't allow those points to be given back. So if, if I'm being where I really need to find a way to score before we go to period three. 
I'm going to say we got two strategies going on because they both know where right. they are right now right. and what needs to be done uh, either to change it or not change it. Right. Yeah, if I'm Walpaw, yeah, do I want to turn and get some back points? Yes, but it, even more importantly, I'm just kind of staying in control and not mm -hmm. not losing anything. I'm, st you know, when I'm up 3-0, it's a little easier on me. So is Van Wert? Do you think their his goal is to stand up? He obviously wants to get out. Yeah. Um, I see him trying trying to get up get up on his knees if he can. Yeah, you're hearing coaches like, "Come on, get up!" You know, he, to get an escape, he's got to stand up and, and you know, basically make Walpock lose possession. Uh, Walpock was called for stalling there. And you can see Walpock's coaches aren't happy with that call. Um, I would agree with him and on my coaching <laughs> side because he was working. To me, Van Wert was the bottom wrestler not really doing much. So you can see where Walpock's coaches weren't too happy with that, that uh, call on uh, stalling from the top man. Or in some senses, both can get called for stalling. So that might have been fair, but. And that's the end of the second period. We have Adams, Walpacanetta, leading 3-0 over Van Wert in this 138-pound weight class championship final. So if I'm I, a little risky call here, to be honest. I'm Van Wert. I'm down three. Uh, I just got rowed the entire second period. My coaching instinct says maybe don't try to go down again, but, but we'll, we'll see. Um, the idea is they're down three, so they need to get an escape and a takedown. So maybe it will work, and that's what they're going for. Well, it was a nice little somersault there. He tried. Yeah, um, he tried a quick roll. Give us something good for our video cameras <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> and you can see his leg there. He's really trying to stand up and trying to do it again. Is this going to go into Wapak's favor? Right, right. He's got that arm pulled back. Well, and that's what we were talking. I, I feel Walpock did a good job in period two, and now we see back points. Oh, no, only one, so no Just points. Just one? Yeah, he, oh, you gotta, no get, points to, or one? You gotta oh. get to a two, and then they'll get a, from two to four is two points, five. So now, you see that hand, once he gets to five, it's three points. So you see he only got to four, so it's two points of back points, which puts it five zero. Again, this is where if you're in Walpock, you, you look at maybe riding him out, uh, just just staying in control, nothing crazy. Van Wert's re obviously really got to work to do something here to find a way to gain any type of point back. Mary lets him out there, so that's one point for Van Wert. It's five to one here in the third period, and we're getting close to the end of the third right, period. Right, yeah, not much time left. And this is a situation where Walpock, you're kind of just defending. Uh, Van Wert, you gotta go for, when I was coaching, you know, you don't wanna use some crazy five, four point moves, but this is one where you kind of just gotta go for something, some type mm -hmm. of throw. Uh, to, and you see their coaches go for it, you know, you gotta go for something or you're gonna lose. If I could tell him, when we talk <laughs> about good television, not that I want anybody to be hurt, but throws make good television. It does, right, yeah, and that's where you want, you know, you can hear Van Wert's coaches like, you gotta throw, you know, do something. Um, so that looks like they're going to end there. And that wraps it up. Antoine Adams of Wapakoneta, he is your winner at the 138-pound weight class with a score of 5 to 1. When we return, the 145-pound weight class brings neighbors Salina and St. Mary's. We'll move you back. Welcome back, everyone, to the WBL Wrestling Championship presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. This is the 145-pound weight class, and you're watching Zach King of Salina in the blue against Bo Hertenstein of, oh, I'm sorry, in the green. Zach King of Salina in the green, sorry, Salina, against Bo Hertenstein of Memorial in the blue. Green strap goes along with Salina's colors. We don't have a blue one for St. Mary's, so they're red. Yeah, so we have one of our, I think we have five guys here today going for their second uh, WBL championship, and King is one of those. He did. He won, He was a WBL champion last year. Um, 
these two, you know, only what five minute drive from one another. I've seen each other a few times, and and uh, you know, as as Hurtsing and Bo just hit a real good, real good move there for a five point move. So he's really coming out to wrestle here and trying to upset uh, the defending WBL champion from last year. Ref is looking at those shoulders, analyzing it. Close, and it's and there. It's good. It. Well, congratulations. Listen to so, yeah. the cheers happening there. Bo Hernstein of St. Mary's did not come in the first or second seed. Yeah, real good match. And, and that's just shown where St. Mary's pinned his is right way now. to the championship there. Yeah, good for him. Won so. all three of his matches by pins. That's Bo Hertenstein of St. Mary's Memorial. He is your 145 pound weight class champion. And we are back. 152 weight class is underway now. It's Keegan Sharp of St. Mary's in the blue against White Buell of Wapakoneta in the red. Red straps on Wapakoneta's leg. Green strap is on Keegan Sharp of St. Mary's Memorial's leg. And just like many of our other matches, these guys are starting out working hard, but already getting pulled back. Yep, it's stalemate, so they're starting them over. And, and some of these more experienced refs, they, they're they see that nothing's going to uh, happen, you know, uh, for either rest or no advantage. So they call it quick and get back on their feet to hopefully, you know, spark a little more action. I suppose they can see the position they're in. Yeah. There's really nothing yeah. that's going to take place. Yeah, they can't. Yeah. And again, right now we have two points uh, takedown for Walpock. I feel like we called Walpock and St. Mary's a lot, which yeah. <laughs> we, we have. They just a lot of a lot of these guys from Walpock and St. Mary's are in the finals sprinkled in with some of the other league teams. Got him over on his back. No points there. Got him back around. Or he, he got himself back around. Yeah, we really haven't had time, but but uh, as we were mentioning, uh, you'll see the refs where they start making their count. If it only gets to one, there's no points given. If it's two to four, it's two points. And if it's five or more, it's three points. And those are called near, near fall. So now they're out of bounds. And they really watch the feet on that out of bounds because they can have their whole body out of there as long as what one toe is inside yeah, it's still feet, counted yeah they they changed the rules a few years ago if they have the feet in still it used to be when when both majority of bodies were out they were considered out now they're getting more similar to how college calls it and and allowing them to kind of wrestle off that line into the out of bounds ring and really just extending the allowing them to wrestle more so there's not so many stoppages during the match Watching Keegan Sharp of St. Mary's. He's in the blue, wrestling Wyatt Buell of Wapakoneta. Buell is up 2-0 as we are nearing the end of the first period. This is the first period, right? We've yes, had so many yep, periods the now. Period. They're yes. starting yeah. to blend together still, to me. Still first period, and, <laughs> and he's gone for some near fall. Oh, only, again, only got that one count, so no near fall. Unsportsmanlike conduct just called on the red team, which is Wapaw, called against the coaches. So that's one point given to St. Mary's. So now we have a score of 2-1. Wapak is still leading 2-1 due to that unsportsmanlike conduct call. So, <laughs> and again, we've talked about coach. He's been around a long time, but so has this is uh, Mr. Wilson here, the referee. He's been around, around a long time as well. Maybe a newer ref, uh, you get by with that, but, but what he gave him a team point for, he said, you need to be counting faster because he wanted a two count instead of one for back points. So he was very quick to ding him for the point, though. Yeah, if you notice, the wrestling coaches are not very far away from the refs. The way, the way they sit, they're right there. And of course, we can hear everything they're saying right. over here. So those those refs right. aren't missing a thing. And I was similar to Coach Rossifer from Walpock, so I, I, I probably wasn't the best coach <laughs> either. All right, four points there for Buell. So it's now 4-1. Uh, as they bring them back into the center ring. Still in the second, second period, period yep. here. 4-1, Wapak over St. Mary's. And these points matter because St. Mary's came in here leading into the finals. Wapak is in second place. Um, coaches absolutely knew what's going on as they get here as this championship for the team is on the line. Right, right. And St. Mary's had a pretty big lead, but, you know, Wapak is trying to claw away to get it closer. Even if they can't, you know, come out on top, they. They're you know, at least trying to close that gap. And, and 
they've had a few a few wins. Uh, um, although you know that hurt the last match with Bo really helped St. Mary's too. That was one where maybe on paper wasn't supposed to happen, and he came out mm -hmm. and, and did well against Salina to give them even more points. Well, Pox got control of one arm there, but St. Mary's is not giving him the second one as Walpock continues to try and get him, get control of him to he's flip him over and there, he's got it. So now back, his back's not on the ground though. Yeah, so back, so he's still in control, so that back point still counts. So yeah, he's still, you see the ref on the other side giving the back points. Um, that was a wing that he used to get him turned over. So now, and now he's gonna, a lot of time left in this period to just try to, you know, drop that back in to just get all his weight on top for the for the possibility of a pin. So I didn't see, what, was that two back points that he uh, got three? three. He so got yep, three. three, yep, he got the five count. And now he's just trying to go for a pin and lock, lock it up here. And again, a lot of time left for Walpock to possibly be able to do that. 7-1 is our score, I believe, if I'm calculating and things correctly. And there's close to a pin. Okay. Walpock coach is kind of going, what's going uh, on yeah. here? Uh, what's, this, what's the weight? Yeah, oh, Ref and is no. And not, it's a good fight by St. Mary's. And you see that there was an illegal move by, by uh, St. Mary's to give an extra point to, for Walpock. So we, we, we've been discussing the different point values. A, a decision is, for those of us aren't, not familiar, a decision is winning by seven points or less in a match. A major is winning from eight points to, to 14. A tech fall is then 15 points or more and the match ends. And then obviously a pen. So right now, Walpock's getting close to that possibility of a tech fall, which if you're up by 15 points or more, the match is called. It, it's basically, you, you, you've won by what's called a tech fall. So it doesn't even have to get to the end of the period. Correct. It correct, will just correct, end at correct, that point. Right. So, so there's four possibilities, and each one is just an extra point. A, a decision is three points, a major is four, a tech fall is five, and a pin is six. And, and we haven't seen any majors or tech fall so far. It's been either close matches or pins. So this is one, though, that could possibly become a major, if not the pin. If not if a not pin. pin. Two yes, more points yes. there. And the pin. And the pin. So there we go. Wyatt Buell, Wapakoneta. 152 pound weight class. He is your WBL champion. Defeating Keegan Sharp of St. Mary's Memorial. When we return the 160 pound weight class, Wapakoneta and St. Mary's again. You'll see that in just a moment. You're watching the WBL Wrestling Championships on WOSN. Welcome back to the WBL Wrestling Championships presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. It's the 160 pound weight class finals. Brings you Corbin Mitchell of Wapakoneta against Isaac Torsell of St. Mary's Memorial. Mitchell in the red singlet and the red ankle uh, uh, strap. Isaac Torsell of St. Mary's in the blue with the green strap. Mitchell working to overcome him, and there he gets that, uh, gets the two points. Yep, takedown, and now he's going for some back points, and, and like we just said earlier, a lot of time left in this period for St. Mary's to have to fight off of, uh, fight off of their back, so. All right, so that's three more points right there. Right, now, now so you'll notice the ref hasn't actually showed it yet, so. Oh, so, so until it changes, it is a three, it. but until it, yeah, until it changes, and. Right now, he may go right to the pin because he's got that lock pretty deep. And he did. Stands erupts as Corbin Mitchell pulls off his ankle strap. Well, we I, talked I about lost <laughs> track of how quickly that happened. We talked about, it was about a minute into the first period, we talked about some of these matches and we see a lot of St. Mary's and Walpaw. Can you hear Walpaw getting loud? Because that's two in a row where they beat St. Mary's, which is exactly who they needed to beat to try to get closer uh, as far as the team final scores go. 
Welcome back, everyone, to the WBL Wrestling Championships presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. This is the 170-pound weight class. We've got Nolan Deppi of Bath against Gavin Brown of Salina. Deppi's having a great season so far. He, he broke the school record for pins in the season a couple years ago. So here he is, the sole representative for Bath here in the finals against Gavin Brown of Salina. Yeah, and he's, he's uh, quick takedown, uh, quick two points from Deppi, and, and his dad's actually his coach over there in the corner. So, so uh, and he was a Bath wrestler, so kind of keeping it in the family here. Um, probably one, one of our first matches where I don't think we have a Walpock, just a Walpock or a St. Mary's wrestler out here. So it's interesting to not see uh, the yellow or the red. That's right, Nolan Deppi did come in as the top C. He made his way to the finals with two pins over Drew Niemeyer of Shawnee and Caleb Turner of St. Mary's. Gavin Brown, your second seed, he made his way by one pin and then a 7-5 decision. So you got these two guys here in the finals. Yeah, so I, again, Deppi probably with a little more of the experience and and uh, the understanding uh, of what, what needs to happen here. An early takedown, uh, he gives up a, an escape here to make it back to two to one. But again, Salina's got a pretty pretty big uh, group of wrestlers. Their, their practice room is pretty big as well, way bigger than Bath. So you know that that helps kids like uh, uh, Gavin just with some of those uh, 20, 30 guys in the practice room, um, which only a few of these schools have have anymore. We are still in the first period. Bath is leading two to one right now over Salina. Deppi of Bath has two points. Brown of Salina with one point here in the first period, 170 pound weight class at the WBL Wrestling Championships. Oh, oh he just about got himself yeah. out of that. Brown went for a throw, good for him. You know, he, he went for a throw and uh, Deppi, Deppi got out right as period ended to, to keep from giving any points up. So our, our production crew, when we were watching the start of this, was uh, making a comment, said, oh, I've never really watched how wrestlers warm up. And there was a lot of quick movements and getting their muscles ready to go. And they have got to react, just like we saw with Deppi just now, quickly right. saving himself from right. that. And that's, that's a, a handful of times we've seen today. Those points are just about to happen as the time's running out and kind of saved, saved by the clock there a little bit. Do the wrestlers have an idea of where the clock is? Yeah, uh, you'll notice some always eye, eye over, especially when they're up or up, maybe up by some points or whatever, to kind of know to stall a little bit and or, you know, when they can make a move or even be a little more risky with throws and stuff to where if they don't get it, they know time's running out anyway, so it won't hurt them. But. I'm not sure if he knew on that one or just ended up working for him. <laughs> Both wrestlers are trying, neither one. I was going to say neither one yep. getting where that's that point. We see Deppi get two points. Another two for Deppi, and I believe it's 4 1 now. 4 1, yep. that's what I've got yep. too, as well. So. so he's pulling his arm. I'm sure he's. Uh, teach me here. I'm yeah, assuming he's, he's pulling the arm because he wants to get that. Uh, get him back on his yeah, back. Yeah, he's trying to work like a, that's like a wing he's trying to work to where then he can bring him around and, and make a, a yeah, quick quick turn uh, for some back points. Uh, and some decent defense here by Defiance, or by Salina, not, not trying to give up any type of turns, but these are those type of matches where the, the couple points here, there, and there become too, too many to be able to get back. So this is where you gotta be careful and gotta try to work to get something here if you're Salina. We are in the second period. Bath leading 4-1 over Salina right now in the 170-pound weight class. Deppi over Brown at the moment in the second period. Not much action here in period two as we go into the last period. Deppi, not a ton of points, but kind of in control. You know, some of these matches are relatively close, but you kind of see that one wrestler in a little more control than the others. So they started at the neutral position. That was a that was his option. He could have chosen differently. Yep. So Salina trying to do something, but 
good defense here, good sprawl by Bath to kind of defend that and just either work out a bounce or work to get a takedown himself instead. So we'll see if he uses that to his advantage. Not yet. And they're out of bounds. This is the third period, and you are watching the finals of the WBL Wrestling Championship. I'm going to remind you that you don't have to pay a penny to watch this, but there are some costs to make it happen. If you enjoy broadcasts like this one and want to say thanks for all the showcasing of high school athletic teams just like this wrestling event, please consider making a donation to TV44 so we can keep airing tournaments just like this one. You can donate online right now at WTLW.com forward slash donate. Send a gift to 1844 Baby Road, Lima, Ohio, 45807, or call 419-339-4444. We are certainly thankful for any donation. Two more points for Deppy right there. Yeah, not a ton of action. Deppy's just kind of countering anything that uh, Brown, Gavin Brown does. Um, and, and kind of now just working the clock. You know, you mentioned earlier, do they kind of have an idea? This is where you kind of maybe glance over and see and just ri ride them out as, as if you're in control. So short of a pin, are there things Brown can do at this point? He's down by five, we're in the third period, um, and he's, he's underneath. Yeah, no, I mean, at, at this point, no, it, it, you know, if he could get up what we call a five-point move where a takedown in a three back, he could at least tie it up. But I think at this point we're past that, and, and you'll notice he's just kind of riding him out. And, and, and it's almost you see it's accepted, you know, the last mm -hmm. few seconds. And that wraps it up. Bath gets a WBL champion at the 170-pound weight class in Nolan Deppi. We have four more matches to go in this championship finals part of the WBL Wrestling Championship. So don't go away. Quick commercial break, and we'll be back for the 182-pound weight class. You're watching the WBL Wrestling Championships on WOSN. Welcome back to the WBL Wrestling Championships presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Only four more matches left, and what you're watching right now is 182. Tyler Carlin from Salina and Preston Coppler from Shawnee. Carlin, two points right there for the takedown as he is continuing to try and muscle his way into this match. Shawnee, though, not giving up. Out of bounds. Oh, not quite out of bounds. And now they will make their way back to the center circle. Here's how these guys got to the championship point of this day. Tyler Carlin had a bye, then a pin in 130, then a major decision in 14-2. And there, Looks like a takedown there, looking to see if he got some points. It is still 2-0 at this moment. Salina is your leader right now, still 2-0. As I said earlier, Tyler Carlin with a pin and then a major decision to get his way to the championship round. Preston Coppler of Shawnee also had a bye, then a pin in 346. Then his match with Wapakoneta had a disqualification. So that's how these two gentlemen made their way here. Tyler Carlin, the number one seed. Preston Coppler, the number two seed. And it's good to see Shawnee here in the championships as we have not talked a whole lot about Shawnee at this point in the championship match. Still 2-0 here in the first period with 30 seconds left to go in this match. 182 pounds. Carlin looking for the arm, trying to get the wing, working hard to get the body over, but Coppler is just not going to give up. See the strength of both of these guys as they continue to wrestle, and we are at five, four, three, just a couple seconds left in the first period, and we end at five nothing in the first period. That's five nothing in the first period. Tyler Carlin 
is in the lead. Second period just about to begin here. Carlin will be down. Coppler will be on top. And the next two minute period begins. Coppler coming after Carlin right away, but out of bounds they go. And so they will head back to the center to restart. Close to the 90 second mark here in the second period. No points scored so far from either opponent. Five nothing is still the score with Salina in the lead. Oh, there's two points there. As you can see, the ref is making the count, watching for the shoulder. One shoulder's down. Can he get the second shoulder down? And he does. Tyler Carlin from Salina. That is your WBL champ in the 182 pound weight class. The 195 pound weight class is next and that brings us back to another matchup between St. Mary's Memorial and Wapakoneta. It's Cole Donovan of St. Mary's and Jace Naus of Wapakoneta. And as you can see, they are at it right away from the get-go. Fast feet and they are moving and neither one wants to give. 143 left in the first period. And it's now who gets the first takedown. Two points for him. Canetta takes the lead here. Donovan just not going to give up, though. You can see the strength beneath him as Naus is really trying to manhandle him and pull him around. Donovan sturdy and strong here in this first period. Getting close to the one minute mark in this first period. Naus. Had Donovan pulled over for a moment. There we go again. Donovan is not going to let this go. No points awarded, and we have one minute left in the first period. There's two points. Two points for now, so he's now up four to zero in this first period with 46 seconds left. Take a look at how these two men made their way to the championship round. Cole Donovan from St. Mary's, your top seed. Technical fall over Caleb Bledsoe, 22 to three. And then a pin over Tyler Locke of Shawnee in 255. Jace, meanwhile, has not even uh, wrestled more than a minute and 10 seconds before this. His first uh, win was a pin in 28 seconds, and his second win was a pin in 35 seconds, and that's how he got here. He is on top at the moment, but Donovan is just not going to let this one go. 20 seconds left in the first period. Score remains 4 to nothing. Wapak. And that's the end of the first period right there. 4 nothing. Wapak is winning. I want to take this time to remind you that there's no admission fee for you to watch this tournament, but there is a cost for WOSN to broadcast it for you. Say thanks to viewer-supported WOSN by sending us a financial gift. We rely on your donations to enable airing games or tournaments like this one and other locally produced programs. Donate now by visiting WTLW.com and click the Donate button. Second period is underway, 15 seconds in, 20 seconds in. Naus goes after Donovan. Donovan working hard to stay standing. 6-0 is your score at the moment. Wapakoneta still is in the lead.
less than a minute here in the second period. Not much has changed here. We did have, Nouse has gotten two more points, but other than that, we're seeing two strong wrestlers dallying it out, both strong young men, not wanting to give each other much wiggle room, but that 6-0 lead definitely is a benefit for Jace. 46 seconds left in this second period. Of course, not quite yet to the third period. Oh, there's an escape point for Donovan. Made his way out. He has got points, a point on the board now. It is now 6-1 in favor of Wapakoneta. 30 seconds left in the second period. Five point difference uh, between the two. Still an entire period to go. Oh, look at that, how quickly things can change. Two points there for Donovan, but as quickly as that happened, two points for Naus. Three, five points, it's a one point for Naus, I'm sorry there. It is a three point match at this point. Look how quickly that changed. And that's the end of the second period, much different than we had at the first period. Now we have a three point difference here between these two. St. Mary's has five, Wapak has eight, as we now get ready for the third period. St. Mary's on top, Wapak below, and that was a quick really uh, escape point. Naus is now up to nine, nine to five is the current score, as these guys are now in the final period. seconds left in this period. 195 pound weight class. One minute to go. There is still a four point difference here. St. Mary's is going to take over, gonna to have to do something very quickly. And we'll have to do something more than a two point takedown. Guys are back into that neutral position. 45 seconds left on the period clock. seconds left on the clock. Stalling, not the call, but potentially a warning there came from the referee. Points for St. Mary's. It's now seven to nine with 15, 14, 12, 10 seconds left to go. We've got a three point game, a three point match. Walpock with 10, St. Mary's with seven. And that is how this one will end. Jace Nouse of Wapakoneta, he is your WBL champion in the 195 pound weight class. We are back at the WBO Wrestling Championship, presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Just two more matches to go, and this is 220 pounds. We've got Jace Schaefer of St. Mary's and Dewan Jones of Elida. Nice to see Elida here making their way into the final. Of course, nothing against uh, St. Mary's or Wapakoneta, but we've certainly been talking a lot about them quite a bit. So Dewan Jones there of Elida, working his hard, working hard to try and uh, stave off Schaefer, but Schaefer's already got two points there. Rolls him around. And the referee is counting. Take a look at those shoulders. Are they down to the mat? Are both of them down to the mat the way that they're supposed to be? And that's a pin, Jay Schaefer of St. Mary's Memorial in 51 seconds. 
he pins his way to a WBL champion, 220 pound weight class. And this is it, your final match of the WBL Wrestling Championship. It takes us to the 285 pound heavyweight class. We've got Brayden Saylor of St. Mary's and Champ Kaiser of Shawnee battling out for the first place. Break there for a moment. Looks like, didn't have the second official yet here. So I started the match, but we're gonna restart it in just a second because for the championship round, we have two officials on the mat and we started this one just with one official. So in just a moment here, we're gonna, we will restart this match. And here we go, first period is underway. These two guys, Braden Saylor of St. Mary's and Camp Kieser of Shawnee. No one down yet, which is not uncommon in a heavyweight uh, class. A lot of times you see a lot more sparring here. A lot more movement. We are 0-0 here in the first period with just a little bit over one minute left to go. How do these two guys make their way to the finals? Well, let's find out. For Braden Saylor, he was the number two seed. He pinned Jamari Collins from Defiance in 119. Then he pinned... Hold on a second, I apologize for that. I'm looking at last year. Last year, these two uh, came together in the semifinals and Braden Saylor was the winner last year. So here we are to this year, it's still 0-0. Just about 30 seconds left in the period here. 0-0 between these two guys. Back out to neutral again. And that's the end of the first period. No score in the first period between these two. Zero. Zero for St. Mary's and Shawnee. We've certainly been talking a lot about St. Mary's all throughout our broadcast. Um, they came into this tournament undefeated. They are the previous champion. Ah, there you see holding. Um, I believe that was the holding call. One point is awarded to St. Mary's. Sailor staying firm there on his feet. Got his, got, yep, you see that? He got his leg around Kieser's and got Kieser down. So he's got two points there for the takedown. He's now leading 3-0 with 90 seconds left in the second period. Still got his leg, his leg wrapped around Kieser's. Not allowing Kieser to really move much, though. He is certainly making every attempt that he can to get out of that hold. are just about standing up at this point and gets out of bounds before he has a chance to get an escape there. So we start that one back up with just a little over one minute left on the clock in the second period.
dangerous hold call or, or something in regards to danger. So referee has stopped things once again and got Shawnee down. St. Mary's up as they start this back up with just less than 30 seconds left on the second period. And that's it in the second period. Score remains 3 0 with St. Mary's in the lead. Final two minute period will start in just a moment. out of town or can't get WOSN or know someone who can't do the WOSN, of course, if you're watching it, then we assume you can get WOSN. They're now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 donation allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wosn.tv to sign up. Final period now, 150 left on the clock. 3-0 is still our score between um, St. Mary's and Shawnee. And St. Mary's is your leader, Braden Saylor and Champ Keezer. They're our final wrestlers for this WBL Wrestling Championship. Back points, a takedown, those are things that could change this out if Shawnee would have a chance to do that. Well, maybe it's going to well, it still would work, but it's going to be a little bit more as St. Mary's just got two more points here. And we have just just over a minute left on the clock here in the third in the third period. So they're trying to wrap his his knee and leg around that of Kieser so they can try and pull him over. Kieser just not willing to relent. Fifty seconds left to go. Forty-five seconds left to go in this final match of the WBL wrestling tournament here at Elida. Referee counting, watching. Not awarding any points here. 18 seconds, 18 seconds. And that's it. Finishes with a pin. Braden Saylor of St. Mary's Memorial. He is your WBL champion in the 285 pound weight class. And that's going to wrap it up for us here at WOSN. We thank you for watching the WBL Wrestling Championship. For Brady Overholt and myself, Jennifer Beck, we also want to thank Cassidy Driscoll, Stephen McNeil, and Nick Fraley for their involvement in this broadcast. We hope you have a great night. Thanks for watching WOSN.